Maria started a few months ago as a freelancer at an Uber-inspired company. Her job didn't come with a contract or benefits, but the pay seemed decent. But the pay seemed decent. She knew she was worth more, but her last job had a relentless schedule, and she appreciated the flexibility to schedule around her son's birthday and her mom's appointments. But after a few months, she began to worry. Sorry, I'm so nervous. <laughs> But after, a few, <laughs> but after um, a few months, she began to worry. The hours became unpredictable. And inexplicably, she'd log into her portal and her pay rate had dropped. Maria's working for one of Silicon Valley's hottest tech startups, but she isn't a coder or a graphic designer. She's a domestic worker, and she's dispatched to clean houses through a new on-demand app. She isn't making hundreds or even $50 an hour but barely $15 an hour. Technology is disrupting everything that we know about the way that we work. I am the Social Innovations Director for the National Domestic Workers Alliance. We are the, we are the leading voice for the nation's three million domestic workers. They are the nannies who work, who comfort the colicky babies, the caregivers who diffuse the panic attack of a disoriented grandparent, and the cleaners who keep our homes tidy. Domestic work is rooted in the ugly legacy of slavery. And today, about half of domestic workers are women of color, many of whom are undocumented. Now, this poverty workforce has never benefited from even the most basic labor law protections that all of us take for granted, including the right to a weekend, minimum wage, and the ability to form a union. As a result, domestic workers have struggled for decades with pay insecurity, working without contracts, inconsistent hours, and no health or retirement benefits. The same challenges we're all going to face as we transition to the gig and freelance economy. Now, this workforce has worked in the shadows for generations, working behind closed doors in the privacy of other people's homes. But the entrance of Silicon Valley into the informal and invisible world of care is rapidly changing the way this work is arranged, mediated, distributed, and paid for. Online marketplaces are making it easier than ever before to find care. And much of the funding and frenzy is tied to tech capital imagining the Uber of babysitting and the Uber of house cleaning. But what does an economy solely driven by technology look like? How will app builders code for an industry that's essentially about human relations? And how will we ensure that the business of care is indeed a caring business? Now, it's easy to be cynical about this. And it's probably true that without our voices, technology will simply codify inequity at a greater pace, scale and pace than we've ever seen before. Yet, none of this is inevitable. All that separates inequality from opportunity, anxiety from security, feeling valued to feeling discarded, feeling discarded to feeling valued, are the choices we all make, the businesses that we build, and the way that we code. That's why we launched Fair Care Labs, the new innovation arm of the domestic worker movement. Domestic workers are taking matters into our own hands. Earlier this year, we broke new ground by our, with our partnership with tech giant Care.com to launch the Fair Care Pledge. We're building our own apps and our own ventures. And I'm happy to announce that the domestic workers next month will release the first set of FAIR principles for the on-demand and sharing economy. We all have a lot of stake here. Venture capital should not and will not determine the monopoly 
on solving problems and the future of our economy. We will write the rules of the new economy. Domestic workers are the proverbial canaries in the coal mine. Where they have been is where the future of work is going. Our tomorrow will depend on how we treat the most vulnerable among us today. Join us as we design a new future where we're accelerating opportunity instead of incubating inequality. Thank you.